Mr. Rap. Yes, you can cheer. You can cheer. Let's go back to 1991. He went on. Friday. He went on from that to have a flourishing career in acting, producing, starring in films like Boys in the Hood. Friday, my personal favorite. One, two, three. And his latest. Right along. Please welcome back to the show, my friend, Ice Cube. for that. Um, let's see. MLK Day, what did you do? Oh, man, it was a good day for me. Uh, <laughs> it was real cool. It was, this, uh, it was these guys on the internet, and they had a charity that they wanted to get Ice Cube's a pimp on the Goodyear blimp. I've been reading about this. You all know about this, right? Yes. And uh, they was doing it for a great cause. It was for a cause, a place called Home, which is a, a charity that's in South Central Los Angeles, helping kids. Very cool. We raised twenty-five thousand dollars for them, and uh, they put today was a good day on the blimp. They couldn't put ice cubes of pimp on the yeah. blimp, like your kids. You know what I'm saying? So they put it was a good day for a place called home, and you know they raised twenty-five thousand dollars for these kids in this home, place called home. Nice charity. So. Yesterday was a good day. It was MLK Day, yeah. and we was number one at the box office. Damn! Um, that is a good day. Um, speak, speaking of which, uh, I think on the Breakfast Club I read a transcript where you said that was a song they didn't want you to do because because of your image. I guess you're not supposed to have a good day or something. Like yeah, yeah. They're like, yo, some of my producers when I did it was a good day. They was like, man, I don't know. You're a hardcore gangster rapper. What you talking about? I said, man, I'm a reality rapper. I'm like, Ice Cube can't have a good day. If I have a good day, I got to talk about it, man. Yeah. Yeah. I, a reality rapper. I like that term. Have you ever used that term before? Oh, yeah. You know, that's what we used when we first came out. We called it reality rap, you know. and uh, Before I, reality TV? Before reality TV. Yes. And um, the, the media coined the phrase gangster rap, you know, and it just kind of snowballed from there. Wow, that's, that's kind of cool. Um, and you recently rapped somewhere, performed somewhere w with a group of guys, right? Oh, yeah. Uh, talking about N.W.A.? Yeah. Oh, yeah, no doubt, baby. Yeah. No doubt. Yeah. You, know, corrupt. <laughs> you know, we, uh, I got an album I'm, I'm working on called Everything's Corrupt, but, yeah, from, from N.W.A. to now, man, rapping is my love, you know. It's, it's, it's where I started. It's my foundation. A lot of people want me to just do movies, you know what I mean? But I can't, you know, I'm a, I'm a true artist. I gotta do it how I feel it, and uh, music is, is my first love. Okay, here's my question. I've heard boxers, uh, there was a famous boxer that had a quote, it's hard to train at 5 a.m. when you sleep on silk sheets. A lot of people feel that once you're rich, and once you're comfortable, it's hard to write the kind of stuff that you wrote when you came out of the hood, you know? How do you keep writing and what you write about now? I mean, you know, I still write about, you know, how we grew up, you know, it's still in, in, entrenched in me, you know what I mean? It's still how I grew up. I, I ain't forgot where I'm from, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Money hasn't changed me like that. Right. And I feel like I'm in a position now, of course, you know, I made a lot of money. I could sit back and say, you know, everything is all right now, you know, it's no problem <laughs> with people. And, but now I'm in a position to speak for people who can't speak for themselves. Mm -hmm. So I still got to tell the real, you know, ain't nothing changed in the hood. It's the same old thing. That's the problem. So, you know, it's really all about, you know, trying to tell people how it is and hopefully they can make the right decisions. What will you rap about now? Because uh, comics get better as they get more on their hard drive. What will you rap about now that you didn't rap about as a young man? I mean, you know, the name of the album is Everything's Corrupt, so I'm talking about corruption everywhere, you know, I'm talking about, you know, 
a lot of youngsters uh, done moved away from the drink and the weed. They're on them pills, you know what I mean? I talk about, you know, they got to get off them pills and them narcotics. You know, it's just really a lot of stuff still that, that, that needs to be talked about, need to be rapped about, and who best than Ice Cube to do it? Okay. This is, uh, this is gonna sound maybe corny, but, but you're a successfully married man. Will there be any rap about love? Of course, you know, I rap about love. You know, I've, I've done songs dedicating them to my wife. Uh, you know, that's reality, you know what I mean? I, I rap about reality, so I'm not just, you know, a person that's just talking about the bad stuff in the world. You know, I talk about, you know, it was a good day every now and then. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. We'll be back with more Ice Cube. What do you need? It's gonna keep my body dry. What's it? Let's go. Wait, let me put my gloves on. Let's go. I knew I was gonna need gloves. Shut up! Let's go. Uh, we're smiling. Yo, you um, you played it down a little bit. You said it's the number one movie, which it is. But it's, it's bigger than that. It's the number one movie of all time for the MLK weekend holiday type release. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's a record. Yeah, it's definitely a record. You know, it's, it's, it's a beautiful thing, a lot of hard work. You know, we did this on 2,600 screens. So. Okay, now, 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 that's good because you did a huge number on less screens than most people. Yeah, you less know, theater. a lot of the big blockbuster movies, you know, sometimes they get up to 5,000 screens. So, you know, we, we did those numbers on less screens, so we had theaters that were kind of busting at the scene. So it was, that was a beautiful thing, a lot of hard work. That's Shout out to my man Kevin Hart, Will yeah. Packer, Tim Story, Matt Alvarez, Universal, Donna Langley. Everybody. Yeah. Um, I've heard you refer, as a matter of fact, last time you were here we talked, you said Kevin was a comic genius, and you and I have known all the geniuses. Describe what makes you say that, because you wouldn't say it if it weren't true. Well, I, I just think he's a master because he can make any situation lighter. Mm -hmm. You know, it doesn't have to be scripted. You know, it doesn't have to, uh, you know, it's just hard for somebody who can, you know, you just tell him, make me laugh, and the mm -hmm. dude can come up with something that's going to make you laugh, yeah, you know? Yeah. And I just think that's that's magical, and I think he has that. You know, I've seen him in meetings where he just had these people in the palm of his hands because he had them rolling on the floor, you know? And uh, I just think it takes special kind of comedians who are naturally funny, you know? They don't need a script. They don't need anything. They can make anybody laugh at any time, and, and that's Kevin Hart. Yeah. Um, Shoot. Yes. Um, okay, so we have this huge record the, the, that you've set with this movie. You've come a long way, my brother, and, and you have this staying power. I used to, I used to dream of being on a Tonight Show or, or, or hosting my own talk show in the basement with my friends, interviewing people. Did you visualize all this? Um, I mean, I, I, I would I would say I was lying if I visualized mm -hmm. it all, you know. Because Cuba I, Gooding, he, when you asked Cuba that question, Cuba was yeah. like, oh, yeah, I knew all and everything going to happen, mean, you know. I, I had dreams, you know what I mean? I used to watch, you know, mm -hmm. Sidney Poitier and Bill Cosby movies and, you know, wish that was me, you know. Wish I was in those kind of movies, but it was just a dream, you know. And uh, I ended up meeting somebody that was, you know, as cool as Dr. Dre and, and it, everything started snowballing. And, and what I got attributed to Arsenio is recognizing my opportunities and not being afraid to give it a shot, you know, and, and, and to try something new and to study and to, to you know, strive to be the best. And um, things have worked out for me and it's turned out to be a, a beautiful career. You've done it all, uh, music, film, producing, successful home, is there, Anything you would like to have a mulligan, a do-over? Oh, man, uh, a do-over? I, I don't know, man. I, I don't think I could, uh, I could do it any better than I've been doing it, Arsenio. That's a good know? feeling. Like, yeah, That's a good you know, feeling. It, it, it that? really is. You know, there's always one or two things that I would change, you know, zig when I should have zagged here and there, but for the most part, I wouldn't change nothing because I've done it my way. You know, I haven't been, uh, plucked and pulled and, and dragged and drugged in any kind of way through this industry. It's been on my terms, my way, at my speed, and, you know, who can ask for more than that? Yeah. yeah. Um, 
Let's see. You and I have talked about director F. Gary Gray and you all collaborating to maybe do an N.W.A. movie. Yes, yes, he's the director on the N.W.A. movie. Uh, it's, it's in full motion, and uh, you know we're gonna we're gonna do a movie about the world's most dangerous group from so, beginning to now. From beginning to end. Yeah, and, yes. and, and in the beginning, like who, like when I met you, when you came over and brought me that cassette. Yeah. Uh, who we're plays for that? Yeah, yo, okay. who who plays Young Q? Uh, in a perfect world, my son, OMG, you know, he looked just like me, he, you know, he can, he can rhyme and, uh, and I think he could do it, you know, it's really about working with Gary and the other producers and, you know, making it happen. I don't, I don't want to just do it just because he's my son, I want to do it because he's the best guy for the job, which I think he is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, uh, sometimes when I'm talking to people, I look up in the monitors and, and, and you can, I can see different shots. And you have a good day a lot. You smile a lot. Yeah. And it's funny because I was looking on the internet and I'm doing research and there was like 200 pictures of you where you were not. I couldn't find a smiling photo. I, I found the photo from when you learned that Straight Outta Compton went platinum. Here's the photo. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, found, I found the photo. <laughs> From, from when you won BET's 54 Iconic, I Am Hip Hop Honor, here's the photo. <laughs> but here you smile a lot, you have a good day moment here a lot. I, here's when you found out you were having your first child. Look. <laughs> I am glad you're having a good day, good moments, a good career, an amazing icon of hip hop and television. Ice Cube! Wait, um, 22 Jump Street? Yeah, 22 Jump Street. <laughs> yeah, they know exactly where we're coming from. Yeah, Black Captain Dixon. Mm. Oh, so, oh, you're a, a, a captain on the police force? Yeah, Captain Dixon. He's mean as all outdoors, man. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. How amazing that you're playing policeman. <laughs> wow. And he said, there's police. a guard somewhere. <laughs> you, but, but that makes sense. You just don't like bad cops. Yeah, I mean, you know, who, who, who likes a corrupt cop? You know what I'm saying? So, you know, we've protested against bad cops. You know, and uh, in the movie, we play good ones. So, it's all right. Yeah, I'm sure uh, 22... Jump Street will become a franchise because you don't just make movies. It's amazing you touch stuff and they become franchises. Are we there yet? It's a franchise. Fridays, and I know there's gonna be another one. They're gonna get right. That's gonna be, a, but it's already a franchise. Yeah, we want it. I want it too. Um, oh, what's next? What you gonna? Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Since I'm, I am the franchise king. Yes. I've decided to dip my nose into another form of entertainment. Oh. Children books. Oh, yeah, you have kids. Yeah, yeah, I have kids. Yes, yes. Nighttime children books. Want to check it out? Oh, absolutely. You got something? Got a little something to show you. B. Now we're about to witness the strength of street knowledge. In a big bedroom that was a telephone and a big balloon and a picture of the cow jumping over the moon. Three. Bears sitting on chairs, two punk ass kittens in the mix. A little yeah. crack house and a bitch ass mouse, a comb and a brush and some hot ass mush. A little old lady who was whispering hush. Good night, boom. Good night, June. Good night. Cow jumping over the moon. Good night. Boom box playing the tune. Punk ass bears and little ass chairs. Good night, punk ass kittens and your mints. Good night, bitches. Good night, snitches. Good night, rats. Gats. Good night, house. Good night, bush. Good night to the blunts and the kush. Good night to the old ladies whispering shush. Good night, stars. Good night, air. Good night to your crumb snatchers. Every way. <laughs>
guest has starred in movies like Rock of Ages with Tom Cruise and Watchmen. Now she can be seen in ABC's hit comedy Trophy Wife, which I for that season. Oh, hey, babe, you're finally home. How's work? Uh, no, actually, it's morning. I just got up. What's that? Angry Chihuahua? No, it's a carefree rabbit. See? Okay, what's happening? Nothing. Your, your, your wife, Jackie, this one. That one yeah. quit on me, okay? She quit on me. So now I had to deliver 50 lunches, now I have to make 50 more for tomorrow. And for the life of me, I do not know how to make a, a, a blueberry into a blowhole. A blowhole. Marlene Ackerman. find out everything about you. Hey, what oh is my your, your first name? Malin. What does that mean? Malin. Uh, it's Swedish, and they tell me that it traces back to meaning trustworthy. Trustworthy. Yeah, do you trust me? Yes. Yes, yes I trust that, that what you just said is true. Okay, so, okay. Um, and you have a nine-month-old? <laughs> I do have a little baby nine-month-old. <laughs> Uh, you have a kid Yes, yes, right? I have a 14 year old. Oh my God, and, how is uh, that? Do you lock him up? Oh, you're in such trouble. Oh God, I'm so worried. <laughs> <laughs> and, and what's it like being the mommy to a boy? Oh, it is awesome. I mean, you know, it's it's my only child so yeah. far, so I, I can't. You take him to get his hair braided. Yes, yeah, no, he doesn't listen, have that's, that's me. That's me. <laughs> oh. You take him to get his hair braided? Yeah, we used to do yeah. that. Yeah, we used to go get corn rolls. You you did too? Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, we well, oh, yeah. yeah. That was a time. See you in there was a time when I was an old ass <laughs> ludicrous. Trust me, I, you know. Yes, you did. <laughs> and when ludicrous got rid of his corn rolls, I said, "Son, you keep yours. Daddy's getting rid of his." <laughs> But what do you what do you do with your son? The, I mean, bath time is my favorite. You get him naked, and you just I mean, you just want to squeeze just that little extra inch until he bleeds, but you don't. <laughs> you never do. You would never. Watch me. Yes. Did you ever fight or do karate or martial arts before that project? I did not. Uh, that was my first experience, and it was awesome. It was crazy because we had three months of fight training and Did you confidence? Um, I've, I, my confidence was like way above where it should have been mm -hmm. uh, to the point <laughs> where actually we were in Vancouver shooting and there's some gnarly areas in Vancouver some some mm -hmm. areas that you don't walk around and as a yes. girl at three o'clock in the morning after a party because I thought if someone came at me I knew exactly what to do and you know what I thought of the next morning when I wasn't a little bit uh, buzzed uh -huh. I went uh, yeah I could only have fought somebody had I told them if they should give me a left hook or a right hook. So can you imagine someone coming up and going, hey, hang on, hang on. Uh, let, can you do the left instead of the right? Oh, I got this one. Yeah, I got this one. All right, all right. Yeah. I can't do it anymore. Yeah. Yeah. See? Yeah, yeah. You never want to take a karate class to the street. No, you don't. I know. Women always want to take Thai boy and then think they can protect themselves. You know? Like, you better stop dancing and run. <laughs> um, I saw the dress with the f the pain. The dress with the mess, yeah. Well, I didn't with want to the, say mess, with but the, with the tell, windows. Tell, tell, yeah, tell them what happened, and I'll show them a picture. Uh, uh, listen, I wore a dress that I thought was pretty cool, uh, and um, that's the one. <laughs> What, what did they say? They said it was worse dress for the red carpet that night or mm. something? Well, yeah, for some of them. Some of them said it was nice. But, you, th but there was a few worse dress. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. See, see, <laughs> you, you've been a good guest, and I've really enjoyed this conversation. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you something okay. that'll make you feel okay. good about that dress. Okay. B, MTV Awards. Oh. Yes. I hosted the MTV oh. Awards all over the world. <laughs> Looking like the villain of some horrible comic book. Yeah. Yep. Could have been in and Batman. Yes! What was, era was that? Back I mean. when Prince was walking out with no ass in his pants. What year was that? <laughs> I, I, I forget. Who is it's, it? Uh, ass had hair on it. It, was, it, oh, it scarred yes. me. It scarred me. I almost couldn't read teleprompter after that. <laughs> <laughs> 
Let's talk about Trophy Wife. Okay. Tell them <laughs> what it's all about. We saw a little clip. Uh, it is about uh, a girl who marries a man a little bit older than herself. He has two ex-wives and three kids. Um, it is called Trophy Wife because anyone from the outside will look at this situation and go, ah, she's a trophy wife. But what you soon find out in watching this show is that uh, she's not the trophy wife that you think she is. But, you know, it's one of those things where you come into a situation and all of a sudden you have teenage kids and you're almost closer in age to the kids than you are your husband. Oh, yeah. And you go to parent-teacher nights and it gets awkward. Uh, and you don't know how to handle yourself in those situations. So it's kind of, you know, the funny comes out in the awkward situations that she finds herself in. Cool. Mm -hmm. Cool. Uh, <laughs> see, what else do I need to know about you? You're from Sweden. Uh-huh. Um, I don't or know much about Sweden. You don't know much about Sweden? No. Uh, really. it's, it's, a, it's a bunch of crazy Vikings. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, I, I shop at Ikea sometimes. Yeah. Um, I actually found words that are actual products in Ikea. Okay. They're, they're real <clears throat> Swedish names. And I found names of heavy metal bands. Okay. I'm going to give you some names. You tell me whether it's a heavy metal band or okay. something you can buy at Ikea. This one I'm almost afraid to say. Borknager. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Jim Bomb. Heavy metal band or product at Ikea? Sounds like Ikea. That's, yeah, that's a heavy metal band. <laughs> heavy metal band. Crap out of me. Uh, uh, <laughs> Thagus. That has got to be Ikea, because that means, like, something on the wall. Yes, it, that's a cork board. Very good. See? Very good. All right. <laughs> Stanka. I think I used to date her. Stanka. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Stanka. All right, Stanka. Uh, that is, that is Ikea, for sure. That cannot be... It's absolutely Ikea, and it's a pen. All right. We could do this all night. <laughs> Thanks to Mylan Ackerman, <laughs> Trophy Wife. It's an ABC show Tuesdays at 9.30. We'll be right back. <laughs> The CW Richmond VJ Contest is back. Our next VJ will be in TV commercials, attend events, and be all over social media. Upload a video showing us why you should be the face of CW Richmond. The CW Richmond VJ Contest is sponsored by Papa John's.